Joining us now, Republican strategist Ford O'Connell and backed by popular demand from Newsmax New York, Rick Unger. Gentlemen, we thank you both for being here. Uh, let's just kind of get us where we are right now. GOP Senators John McCain, Lindsey Graham, Marco Rubio, and Jeff Flake have issued a joint statement in response to Reid's suggestion, writing in part, quote, it is obvious that Majority Leader Reid's suggestion that the Senate could include comprehensive immigration reform in its border crisis bill is a blatant attempt to scuttle House Republicans' good faith efforts to pass legislation addressing the issue this week. So, Rick, is that what Harry Reid is trying to do here? You know, honestly, J.D., I don't think there are any good faith uh, efforts coming from either side of Congress to deal with this problem. They got a problem. Nobody wants to confront the immigration question, but nobody wants to go home and campaign throughout the next month uh, with, with their constituents saying, why won't you guys do something about the immigration problem? So they're really playing a game of hot potato. You know, I'm, I'm not going to beat up overly on the Republicans. I'm not going to beat up overly on the Democrats. I'm just going to say none of them are doing their job. All right, Rick, fair enough. Ford, let me turn to you. Gosh, it was almost a decade ago when I maintained the problem is that people view this in Washington as a political problem to be managed instead of an invasion to be stopped. Uh, is this gamesmanship going to continue right on through the break? Well, yes, it is, because Harry Reid is really good at one thing, and that is making Republicans look bad. And right now, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm actually going to go to the left of Rick here. I think Republicans look terrible. But let me say this about Democrats right now with the Central American border problem. The deal is, is they don't want to modify the 2008 Wilberforce anti-trafficking law. And until you do that, you are actually offering an open invitation for large swaths of the world to dump into the United States, and we don't have the resources to deal with that. Immigration is a separate issue. Right now, this is about border security. I do think the Republicans are quasi-making a good faith effort so they can go home and then fundraise off the president without using the impeachment word. But the bottom line is neither side wants to solve this equation. But when it comes to the Central American situation, you've got to modify the Wilberforce anti-trafficking law. Rick, when everybody goes home, will the president take his pen and sign an executive order uh, giving amnesty to 5 million people, further compounding this problem? You know, I feel like Ford and I are switching sides today. I, I really hope not. I think it would be a critical, critical mistake for him to do it, especially with an election coming. It's not going to be well received. I, whether I like the idea or not isn't the point. Politically, it is an absolute tin ear move, and I really hope he doesn't do it. All right. Well, let's go back. Uh, earlier on this program, uh, my former colleague, Kevin Brady, who visited a detention center in Conroe, Texas, in his district yesterday, talked about the bill that will probably come to the floor later this week. And here's what he had to say about that bill. Doing nothing, allowing the president to do what's exactly happening to now with now 350, 370,000 a children surgeons cross the border. To me, that's surrendering to the president. Uh, Republicans, conservatives saying we're going to stop this and we're going to fund returning these kids to their home countries. I think that's the right answer. Well, that is uh, Kevin Brady referring to the claim of Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions that passing this bill, in essence, is surrender to a lawless president. Ford, there is a genuine division within the Republican Party. Will this bill pass this week? Well, I think it's going to have to pass because, again, we're back to a political football and optics. Unfortunately, I do agree with, with Congressman Brady, and that is we have to be compassionate but also pragmatic. We cannot continue to allow people to come here because at the end of the day, this is an open invitation for large swaths of the world to empty into the United States. We have to secure our border. This is a stopgap measure and a good first start, but it's obviously not a final solution. All right, let's move along now and talk about what is happening overseas, the crisis in Israel. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton raising some eyebrows for some comments she made on the situation. I'd like to play this clip for you and then we'll get your reaction to it. I'm not a military planner, sure. but 
Hamas puts its missiles, its rockets in civilian areas. Part of it is that Gaza is pretty small and it's very densely populated. They put their command and control of Hamas military leaders in those civilian areas. Israel, I know, has sent warnings and, and tried to get people to move. But in any kind of conflict, there are going to be civilian casualties. Well, the question that we need to ask you, Rick, is our former Secretary of State and the potential Democratic nominee for president defending Hamas? Actually, I just heard her say exactly the opposite. I'm not sure why you'd even question that. Uh, what, what did she say that would lead you to think she's defending Hamas? I thought she was defending Israel. Well, she offered a disclaimer, and she was very careful. I have my trained ear as a former candidate and office holder myself trying to bring up both sides, but then to say that because of the tight proximity, the implication was you could understand why Hamas might use uh, schools and civilian structures to house oh, I, their rocket I don't, launchers. I don't, I don't, I yeah, I don't think that's what she was saying, J.D. I think the point she was making was because of the close quarters in the Gaza Strip, that that explains why civilians are going to be killed, sadly. You know, you can't respond from Israel. You know, listen, Hamas started this. They were firing the rockets at Israel. Who can blame them for firing back? But because of the, of the, the really close proximity of the citizens in Hamas, what she was saying was, sadly, some people are going to be killed in the Gaza Strip. So I, I, frankly, I think you're misinterpreting with all, all these right. Well, let's see what Ford O'Connell has to say. I, I think that Hillary Clinton has made a slight slip of the tongue because she's also referred to Gaza as the occupied territories when we know, in fact, they're really the disputed territories. And unfortunately, until the Palestinians take a stand on Hamas, the U.S. has to back Israel to the hilt. The bottom line is, is that Hamas is a bad bunch of terrorists who are essentially bent on the destruction of Israel and ethnic cleansing around the world. It is, is an offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood. Hamas must be stopped at all costs, and that's what Hillary Clinton should be focused on. Uh, I, think, I think she was, I don't think she said anything to the contrary. And I'm going to defend her comment about occupied territories a bit for it. Look, this is, you know, a lot of people play games with this. If you look up the UN definition of occupied, it does not speak to military forces being in that region. That, that was the definition that Hamas liked to use, or that Israel likes to use in the past. Well, we moved all of our military out. The fact is, is that when you control a region, whether it's by boycotting uh, items coming through or whatever, by the UN definition, it is an occupied territory. So you can argue both sides of that, to be sure. Well, F fair other... enough, Rick, but I will say this. She's talking to the American voter in the Jewish community. Let's be honest why she's on TV and making the rounds right now. I hear what you're well, saying. Now, but but now you, the day, but, yeah, but you're just side. saying that she's being supportive of Israel then. Well, I'm saying that, frankly, she needs to be tougher on Hamas. Is all uh, I'm saying. There are different I, comments I that are banding about, gentlemen, in the two minutes that remain. Uh, the president of the Israeli Jewish Congress used this terminology, quoting now, never before since the Holocaust have we seen such a situation as today. We are potentially looking at the beginning of another Holocaust now. Uh, Rick, the situation is, is not altogether pleasant. Uh, between the United States and uh, Israel. Um, a lot of critical comments in the Israeli press about Secretary of State John Kerry and uh, his effort to broker a ceasefire. Uh, is this going to present a liability not only politically but in terms of national security and foreign policy? Well, look, there's a few things there. First of all, you gotta, you're absolutely right that the press had a bad reaction to uh, what the Secretary of State did uh, propose. However, it's pretty important to note that the Prime Minister, that Netanyahu and his cabinet have come out and completely rejected that, saying that they are greatly appreciative of Kerry's efforts. So let's be a bit careful with that. As for a Holocaust, look, I'm, I'm a nice Jewish boy. I hear the word and, and I'm trained to be sensitive. I think you have to be careful not to overstate that. I thought that the uh, president of the AGA might have gotten a bit carried away. At least I hope he did. Uh, 40 seconds remain. Fort O'Connell Congressman Jeff Miller was just on this program saying John Kerry needs to step down. Does he? I think that John Kerry is making it worse. And frankly, the UN is not, he has nowhere to go. He's providing no leadership. And essentially, it seems that he's making the situation in, in Israel and Gaza even worse. And at the end of the day, we have to come to a solution to this. And frankly, 
right now Hamas is waging an effective PR campaign and John Kerry's sticking his nose in it. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Gentlemen, we thank you for your insights and your analysis. And America's Forum continues following this timeout.